Hey everybody, how is it going? Brother John here. <laughs> Just think, a few years ago I wouldn't have been caught dead wearing a shirt like this. <laughs> um, I'm doing a response to Jordan, um, aka Religion Free Deist, whose latest video called Liv Leaving Christianity, he shares a couple of uh, uh, journal entries uh, in it is process of deconverting from Christianity to uh, deism um, and I find it um, strange but not yet strange because uh, I, I feel we're all connected in some way or, or, or fashion um, I find it I, I can't even find the word for it when things like this happen uh, and what I'm talking about is that uh, you know Jordan puts his video out, and uh, I've been thinking about putting a video out, uh, kind of an update of what's going on with me, because uh, come June 26th is the two-year anniversary of the Modern Deism channel when I created it. Um, so it's been a little over two years since I became a deist. Uh, for those of you um, who may be new to my channel or are coming across this and or perhaps you're going through some transitions as well, uh, I, I hope some of my videos um, will be of uh, help to you and maybe this video as well. When uh, Quick recap, I came onto YouTube. Um, I have another channel, a third proverb. Uh, that was my first channel here. I created it in November of 06. Didn't put a video out till uh, March of uh, 2007. And now uh, here it is uh, four years uh, later. Um, and um, if you would have told me four, four or five years ago that I would be a deist, I would first ask you what that was <laughs> and then I would say you were crazy <laughs> um, so I I feel that you know since the time now when modern being a deist I, I uh, and from my questions I was going through two three years back I met up with Jordan on YouTube. He was going by uh, Yeshua, my Lord, and we are going. We were going through the same um, same struggle, um, and we became deist. I would say probably around the same time. Though our journeys and paths, like anyone, uh, is is unique. Um. I came across Jordan's channel because at the time he was, uh, I, I, you know, he he's very fluent in in Greek, in reading and writing it and speaking it, and uh, studying the Greek text. And so I found his channel very intriguing at the time because I did a lot of that during my Christian walk. I mean, not as intently as Jordan. Uh, <laughs> he's like an expert compared to. To, to, to me and many uh, many Christians but even as a Christian I felt it was important to learn um, the original meaning of words when you were studying your Bible so uh, I had a strong concordance nearby always which is a great tool um, but it brought up uh, more questions <laughs> than uh, you know answered questions um So, um, if you are, you know, someone who is in your studies uh, as a Christian, you should definitely be having a concordance. Or if you're going through certain things or struggling with certain uh, aspects of your beliefs, um, definitely you should be having one of those because it'll bring to light. Because because words do change uh, meaning um, over time, especially when you're translating it from one language to another. <clears throat> There was another gentleman that I came across, uh, Mr. Wayman29, and um, if you do not know Wayman, Wayman uh, 
very advent reader reads a lot it's got tons of books he's very interested in different world religions and beliefs and and literature and um i had the privilege of having uh wayman over my home about three years ago this was like right in my questioning time uh he was by my house for a barbecue i had uh uh my pastor who was there at the time uh well he was my pastor many years ago and when i moved we reconnected uh met at his home uh on sundays but uh it was nice to have wayman over and give a different perspective and they had a little debate and um that was that was very interesting also but meanwhile my part of my journey here when when i first came here on with third proverb i my intent was to be you know i was an evangelical christian i was here to preach uh the gospel of jesus christ i was also here to preach a unique uh what i thought was kind of unique at the time because um church was getting played out the politics and the drama and all that stuff and uh i really had an interest in getting back to being uh what the church was really about being in meeting in homes and stuff like that i um also uh when i started their their proverb um and at at the time you know i took it as a you know holy ghost jesus experience but i did in fact have some very unique spiritual experiences um I had an experience where I was actually in a euphoric state for a good month, but there was other things going on that I think at that time. I mean, I was started to date my wife, uh, uh, you know, fell in love with her. Um, I, you know, I think maybe part of that emotional whole everything happening kind of at the same time um, made a play to part in it, but it was still it was still unique. Um, so here I am I, I thought I was going to bring to the world uh, the real Jesus uh, bring to the world that um, you don't need church that uh, you, you just need that one on one relationship with God Christ and blah 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 <laughs> um, and then uh, when I came on and then uh, you know again youtube was pretty much in its infancy stage at the time it's amazing how much it's grown in just a few years uh i st learned about stick am chat rooms uh debate faith um list just listening to a lot of uh, debates whether they be scholarly uh on online or in the chat rooms and um brought up a lot of questions see when when you're in the church system when you're in the church system, you and when I was in the church system, I was constantly surrounded by uh, people of the same belief, and then those beliefs are constantly reinforced in your life. Um, and this happens with a lot of different kind of beliefs, politics, and I suggest looking into what memes are, M-E-M-E, -E, which is a very interesting concept, all right? Because when we hear things over and over and over for a co over a uh, uh, course of our lives, and um, and we're told these things are true, um, they become in your mind the truth. Um, you know, especially when you're younger and more impressionable, and blah blah blah. And then later stages when you're going through uh, different transitions, we're all you know, we all go through stages in our life. And I'm sorry if this video was kind of long and rambling but I'm sorry I just whatever's coming to my mind I'm <laughs> I'm going to talk about um so yeah that was my um uh, on that channel that was my way of uh, I was going to change the world for Jesus and then all the questions came up and um I was always a um uh, good proponent of if you're going to say you believe something, um, you should know what you believe and why. So I had to uh, re-examine what I believed and why. Uh, I meant reading a lot more of the Old Testament than I, than I was used to. 
um, because as a Christian, mostly you're in the New Testament. I, I <laughs> read that numerous times in the New Testament. Uh, but I got more into the Old Testament, uh, church history, a meaning of words, uh, questions about Jesus started arising. And the things I was finding out, it was a, it's uh, been a bittersweet, bittersweet struggle. Uh, another book I was reading was um, Pagan Christianity, written by two Christians, which was very controversial at the time. Um, but it got into church history, got into a lot of the practices that are in many of the mainline churches and their pagan origins. Which uh, then, you know, intrigued me to think, well, what other pagan origins are there? So then this is where the questions of Jesus came into my mind. Is deity and the trinity and all that like. So, um, yeah, it, is, it has not been, um, definitely it was not easy. Um, at this point in my life, I'm very... Uh, I'm very comfortable and content with uh, what I believe or even um, not knowing exactly what I believe I'm comfortable with because um, the concept of God, infinite, eternal, all-powering, all-knowing and all-powerful and stuff, um, not knowing all the, what God's all about is I'm okay with. <laughs> And you should be okay with, uh, because if you're not, then that means you want to put God in a box. So, you cannot, uh, I don't believe you can use, have your finite mind uh, put an infinite God in a box. So, that being said, I'm content. Um, I do have still um, ongoing struggles here at home because of my wife is a um, she's a Christian a Pentecostally bent leaning Christian and our ideologies our uh, world views um, more than I would like to say uh, we clash so you know and for others of you who may be thinking of uh, leaving Christianity, going through things, um, you can expect to be ostracized um, by your fellow church members very quickly too. And see, that was a very that was a very eye-opening experience for me when I came out of the. D's closet <laughs> and profess to the world uh, you can see I have that video up on both channels uh, my spiritual journey when I when I posted that video uh, how quickly I lost a lot of subscribers which wasn't as important as I lost um, quite a few church friends um, and though I I the true friends always stick by. The true friends always go will go with you and along with you, and you know sort out the questions. And I had a dear friend James, um, who passed in in November '09, who uh, we would get into Bible a lot and um, the questions we had. And he, him being even as a Christian, he had different viewpoints than most mainstream Christianity but then when I was expressing you know so we would go back and forth and it was very good and something I needed because um, if you're going to change your mind drastically and know what you want to know why you believe and why and re-examine everything you have you want to bounce it off of somebody who really is going to challenge you in a loving way and accept you and you know it's important to have those one or two good friends and they stuck around uh, unfortunately, you know, when my friend passed, so uh, I I miss those conversations dearly. Um, 
ironically enough, a uh, Jordan I know lost a very good friend. I don't know if he was a Christian or not. Around the same time, so uh, I, I feel a, a connection to Jordan in the aspect of our our paths and their similar experiences. But it was wide awakening to know that many people will just, uh, without even asking you why or getting into and maybe um, see if I when I was a Christian. And when I heard someone was changing their beliefs, I remember, you know, um, I wouldn't know why. I want to know why. Um, I would reach out. Uh, or even as a Christian, when I was re evangelizing the people, diff you know, not really. See, I never really ran into many atheists, but I ran into other ritual Christians or Catholics and whatnot. You know, uh, who, who I didn't think were saved. You know, and you need to be born again, and blah blah blah. And so I would want to talk about beliefs and why and stuff. And, uh, I, and my goal was to save people from the flames of hell. So when when I change my beliefs, I my I would think that people would want to be more like. Why, John? You know, can we talk about something? You know, uh, there were those, but the ones that I, you know, you kind of thought you were kind of close and expected, didn't happen. So you're you're gonna find that if you know if you're going through a similar struggle now. Um. um but like I said, I am uh, being a an a deist in a sense is a is a free thinker now. Uh, it is very liberating. <laughs> that I can now explore and look into other beliefs and appreciate other parts of literature I have that freedom I don't have this you know kind of thing hanging on my head that like Satan and I'm is deceiving me I'm being whispered in the ear by a little devil you know and stuff like that you know of because of the thoughts I was having, because as a Christian, whether you wanna, you, you wanna admit it, but there are thoughts that go in your head, and you feel guilty about having these thoughts. You know, they may be random thoughts, and these doubts, and uh, and you're feeling guilty, and you know. So what what your belief structure say? Your belief structure says because of what you're told and what you read is that it's uh, the devil, you know, <laughs> it's a demon. And I digress. Um, so here now it's like I created Modern Deism June 26, 2009 so coming up is two year anniversary um, uh, when I first started I read reread much of the Bible and talked about that and nowadays it seems I have um, very little interest um, in, in, in reading the Bible um, not to say that there is not truth to be found uh, truths to be found in the book uh, I just don't think it's the inerrant infallible word of God for many reasons um, but like many stories and books there are morals taught and truths taught it doesn't make the whole book true uh, you know absolutely reality uh, and that's probably subject to another video or other videos you want to see. Um, so um, lately, I've been getting more into uh, Eastern thought and um, reading Buddhist philosophies, pretty much um, the power of now, being present in the moment. Um, um, uh, how can I say I'm also experiencing a lot of um, disillusionment about the world the things that are going around us uh, the politics and everything um, that seems to be very interesting another aspect but I I do as a deist you know as a deist uh, the word of God to us is creation 
and uh, I love this time of year, spring, summer, the flowers, the grass is out, it's beautiful weather, it's a great time to connect with nature, and I've been doing a lot of that um, lately, and and um, experiencing and coming into, I guess, a, a knowledge or awareness more and more about how we are all interdependent of one another coexist <laughs> I, you know believe me not, four or five years ago I wouldn't have been caught dead wearing a shirt like this but anyway that's where I'm at now uh, is my experience and um, Jordan you know, he's taking a different path he's you know he's definitely more into the Greek and he his debates and he's mean and he's serving he's, Jordan you're serving a great purpose uh, for the YouTube community, community. Um, I want to, you know, if you haven't gone to see his channel, go see it. But Jordan, I want to still appreciate for the work you're doing. Um, the 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 people that you're meeting, pastors and scholars, and people that are recognizing your work and your your unique thoughts. Uh, you're doing a great job. Great job. Um, you know, and I hope from this point on now. Um, and what Jordan does, Jordan, what you do, and um, what um, the little I, I can offer here um, is that now I think with more and more the knowledge at the tip of our fingers and we can access so much so quickly and people at younger ages now, you don't even know, you, you people out there who are in your teens, your 20s, you, you got to think back 10, not even 10, 15 years ago you wouldn't have all this technology things to learn of things was a much slower process you know <laughs> you would have to actually go to a library you know and pick out the books and go through a lot of different stuff to get a you know a lot of time consuming it's a you know god it's so amazing so it, it's 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 wild and i think with it it's just going to come more and more changes in in beliefs in every, a lot of different belief structures I think there's a lot of change still yet to be made a lot of progress and I think as a as deist now um, we can help I believe uh, I can help those maybe who are going through the same process ironically enough also I when I saw Jordan's video and then I was checking my um, email I received a, a letter from a young man uh, early teens and uh, when I get the permission to share his letter and of course share it anonymously I'll do it in whole but pretty much he's going through the same struggle here his family's Christian he's learning of of deism at such an early age he wants to know what, what should he do so uh, he he's aware of this I mean when I was his age I was indoctrinated in the church though I was altar boy <laughs> you know went to Catholic Church every Sunday uh, didn't question too much because I was surrounded by everyone else who was Catholic that was just the way it is and um, I thought the Jews didn't get it right, <laughs> you know. God still liked them, but <laughs> that's a whole other thing. So uh, I'm sorry for rambling here. 23 minutes, 24 minutes. Um, just wanted to share a little bit more of what how you know I came about my in a very vague way, in a very vague way, I guess, and not getting into too, about my journey. Let's leave it at that. And I'm here to help anyone else who wants to go through their journey. Um, I have um, a saying that um, you know Jesus said, "Yeah, the truth will set you free." Uh, but I say the truth will set you free, but it might just piss you off first. You might just get hurt first from others you might just have very inner turmoil 
a lot of struggle first. Anything worthwhile takes struggle. Anything of great success takes going through some kind of pain. And sometimes it is painful to um, realize that what you believe for so many years was false. You feel deceived, you feel lied to. But be encouraged, be encouraged my friends, for those of you who are struggling. Listen to what's going on inside of you. If you need to, pray for the truth. I did. When I was going through my struggles, and many find it, of course, those who are still fundamentalist and dogmatic, when I was going through my struggle, I honestly pray to God, what is going on here? I need to know truth. I need, is, this is too much. And I was quite sincere, whether some of you want to believe that or not. And it took me in a different direction than Christianity. And I come to the comfort that if God is going to condemn me for my questions, my doubts, my or seeing something differently, with the very mind that he gave me, just like Galileo said that um, I don't think, God, I'm paraphrasing it, God would... Uh, <laughs> You know, want me to forego the very gift of reasoning and, and logic, you know. God gave you a brain to use. Um, and to think that he will condemn someone for those doubts of a brain <laughs> that he gave. And you think he's going to condemn them to um, some kind of hell. That kind of God is not worth worshipping. No, it does not exist. It goes against all kind of reason. And uh, you will find peace. You will see dif people differently. Um, you may butt heads. But um, I am less judgmental of people. Um, I don't look at people as saved and unsaved any longer. I look more at a person's character. I look at the words they say and the um, the actions that will hopefully match that. That's how I judge character, judge people now. And uh, I think rightfully so, that's how I should be judged. That's how I judge myself. Um, And that's how you should judge people. You should not judge people beyond what you are willing to judge yourself. And um, when you make mistakes, you should be humble about it. Admit you're wrong and go on. These are truths that I accept. Especially, you know, that are in the Bible and there are many other religious texts. Um, so I, I've gone on too long. Don't even know if you even bother listening to this point. But if you did, thank you. <laughs> Um, but it does come down to um, one of the greatest commandments that Jesus did say. And that is to love your God and love your neighbor as yourself. You should uh, you reap what you sow. This is a natural law um, and that pertains to everything. Your thoughts and your actions. So if you want good fruit, you want good things in your life, uh, you should do good unto others. You should think good things. Um, it will not be perfect, but... It's a learning experience. Life is a journey. Life is a journey. And, um, again, if I can be of help to anybody out there, I'm here. And, um, I hope your journey is going well. So, hopefully, one day, imagine, we can, um, all coexist in peace. <laughs> Bye, YouTube. Till next time.